Hey everybody, this is your man Tyke coming to you with another true spook story. Now before I begin, I'm going to ask that you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'm going to ask that you guys really share me, man. Get me out there. These stories are great, and I think I should be hitting a little bit harder than what I'm hitting, but uh, share me if you think you're not robbery. All right. So let's jump on into this thing. Now, this story is going to take place in the Orlando area, but close to Apopka Vineland Road and Old Winter Garden Road. So for, for us that live here in Orlando, that's like we call that going the back way to Disney and all that stuff there. So you go up, go up Old Winter Garden Road. And then right before you like cross over going to Good Homes Road and all that shit, if you go you pass, if you go too far down the old Winter Garden Road and you get to Good Homes, you don't went too far. So you'll see a pop combined road. You make a left right there and you just ride that on round there. It's going to take you through Metro West, all that good stuff. But this story is going to take place at the park. It's called Rose Park. Now, when you see Rose Park, it's an open theme park, meaning that it ain't gated up and ain't got no trees blocking the view. It's just an open park. A lot of people go there, exercise and run. I go there and exercise and run from time to time. And it's just a really open scene. You see all kind of people. You have some people working out there, but mainly you see a lot of senior citizens there. So now this story is going to take place around senior citizens. So I'm going to give you guys a, you know, disclosure, or whatever they call it, that the little precursor for the sensitivities out there. I, I, I love older people, but uh, it is what it is. The story got to be told. So y'all check me out. It is what it is. So this is one day, and this is about, uh, I'm going to say around by 2008. 2007 2008 and i'm out there and i and i was going through something i was going through some real shit i don't know was i going through a divorce i don't know what the fuck it was i, I was just going through something it had something to do with a relationship i'm just being transparent and i would drive from my house in apopka at that time and i would just go and walk around this track because I ain't had no job, you know, nigga was struggling. And yeah, I think I was going through a divorce. It, no, it was 2015, I'm sorry. 2014, 2015. I was going through a divorce, you know, uh, and the relationship was shitty. So I would just drive there and I ain't had no job. You know, late my, my, my motivational speaking contract had ended due to, you know, you know, the wife's jealousy and, and hurting me before she left because she had all my book of contacts and stuff. So I'm walking around the park and I would go out there and I would walk around that park for like six hours in a circle, just trying to get my mind right, trying to think your boy was going through it, people. So I was doing this during the whole six, seven months I was going through this divorce. And I never saw nothing. I never saw anybody. Well, nobody ever spoke to me. I know I was at my lowest moment. Nobody ever said, hey, how you doing? Is everything okay? What it is, you know, and then sometimes I would cry. You know, I would think I would drive to the store, get me something to eat. And then I'd come back to the park and just sit, just try to sit in isolation. You know, soak up the universe, meditation and pray. I, I just was doing everything to get this nasty feeling off of me. So, one day, I'm hanging out, and I say, well, I'm going to, since I'm at this park and I'm walking, let me start exercising. Let me start getting into shape, shit. Everybody else doing it. Let me do some push-ups, sit-ups, you know, leg raises and squats. So, I, I, I turned it into a hobby, you know. So, I start exercising a little bit, getting in shape, looking good, losing a lot of weight. Granted, I had lost too much weight due to stress and exercise and poor diet. And now, so I'd say, okay, I say, I'm going to go start back walking. I say, I'm dropping too much weight. Let me just walk and don't, don't be doing all this, this rigmarole shit. I'm walking past and I see this old Chinese lady. And this old Chinese lady, she was doing some kind of hand gestures uh, with her hand. But she was 
she had, and I'm going to describe it to you because this makes sense in the story. She was like she was grabbing for the air or grabbing for something out of the air, and she was facing uh, facing straight forward. Her hands was at an angle in the air, like close to her head, but stretched out, and she was just grabbing for the air, like, come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me, like she was talking to some kind of spirit or something. And she was doing that, and then she would turn to the other side, and she would do that for like 20 minutes. So I done had a chance to, to, to run around to run around the park, and I could see her doing that. Now, every morning I'm there, she's there. She wasn't in workout clothes. She was just in regular, old, you know, old Chinese lady dress clothes, going to the corner market, going to the store. So I got curious. And, you know, I didn't think she understood English, you know, because she was a very old Chinese woman. I said, uh, I said, excuse me, ma'am. I said, could you explain to me what you're doing? I said, it looks interesting, and I see you here every morning, and I'm just being nosy. You know, I tried to joke it off. Now, people listen to me when I tell you when I when she opened her mouth. Well, I'll tell you that. She turned around and she looked at me. And when she turned around and she looked at me, her eyes wasn't eyes. These eyes was yellow people, yellow eyeballs. And when she looked at me, she just turned around like a little zombie, like a little monster, like a little possessed person, whatever you want to call it. And she didn't smile. She didn't say nothing. And she just like, turned around with the same hand motions in the air and she you could tell and psychically mentally she tell me put put your hands like this i'm gonna show you put your hands like this but i was so hypnotized and in a trance with her eyes it's like she didn't have to speak i instantly did what this woman said people so i get up yeah, I mean, I, I walked close to her and now we're under the same pavilion and I'm so close. I can see the yellow eyes. There was no black. They wasn't yellow jaundice. This is just yellow glowing eyes. And I'm like, fuck, whoa. But I couldn't stop myself. And she like made me mimic her and we are mimicking each other like a damn mirror. And I so I stand straight. I put my hands up to the side and I start grabbing the air. I started grabbing the air just like she did. And I was doing that. So then all of a sudden I heard this song in my head. Pay attention to what I'm going to say. I heard this song in my head and it was a song like hip hop. And while I was hearing the hip hop song, it wasn't like, you know, Southern hip hop, you know, trap music. It wasn't that type of hip hop or either New York Northern. This is hip hop, but it had kind of like a... Uh, Asian influence background beat to it. So I didn't have on my headphones and I'm hearing the the hip hop and, and she going along with the beat of the hip hop. And, and I'm getting into the rhythm. And as I'm throwing my shoulders, I'm getting into the rhythm. I follow her and we change it. So now me and her rhythm, rhythmatic and grooving together. I mean, and it's in, and, and I mean, and we like this. And so before I know it, about two hours done passed. I'm, I'm thinking it's like two, three minutes, people. Two hours done passed. So after she get done, she put her hands down and she do this little, you know, little, little bow and shit. And when she did the little bow, she walks off. Now, as she walks off, I'm standing there and I'm paralyzed and I can't move. I see her walk off. But as she got further away and she didn't get in the car and she got further away, then now it's like I was able to move. Now, y'all keep that in mind. Now, keep what I'm telling you here. Now, keep what I'm telling you. So, got that in mind. So, i like, damn, why I feel so refreshed? Why I feel so energized? Why I just feel like I can conquer the world? So, I start getting over my depression. So, then I would go there. I would, I would leave and I would go home. I was able to handle business. I was able to deal with my ex-wife shit. I was able to just to, to type, get, do my school work, all that shit. I was, I was in joint. But then 24 hours later, I got all tired and I was depressed. And I'm like, I got to go to this park. So I go to the park again, park my car. I'm walking around in a circle. And out of nowhere, she appears right under the same pavilion. So I look at her again make eye contact, they got them same yellow eyes, 
And next thing you know, I, I just instantly walked over there to her. And for two, three hours, we doing the same thing. I'm losing track of time, but I'm feeling good. I'm hearing that beat. I'm bouncing my shoulders. I'm hearing that beat. Uh, I'm like, damn. Mm, mm, mm. I'm like, now I'm getting the groove. I'm getting the groove. I'm getting the, I'm, 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 I'm rocking with it. Bump, bump. And it's feeling good. I'm feeling good. So the same thing. I can't move. She walk away because, like, I couldn't chase her. I couldn't spot. I, I was paralyzed. She walk away. Bam. She walk in the back of the houses. And, all right, time done passed. I'm, I'm on it again. So I said, okay, dude, this time we're going to do something different. I say, it's hot out there. The sun's shining. I want you to wear some shades. So now I get up there and I get, I get up to the park and I see her there. And I got on shades. I'm not using my regular eyes. So when I had on the shades, and this is those, uh, I think people would call them hater blockers or stunners out in that shit. Just regular shades and just a name for them. But these shades had kind of like a bluish tint on them. I think they were like blue blocker style energy. Or some who could get rid of the x-rays of the sun. I don't know. So I had them on. You know, they about the $14, $15 pair from Walmart. So I put them bitches on. So, you know, I see them. And now I can feel myself walking to her like, okay, man, come over here. Let's experience this shit. And keep in mind, she didn't tell me to take the shades off or anything. So now I'm forcing myself to mimic the move she's doing to which now me and her is out of sync. And she's still doing it for two hours. That's how I know like, damn, it's been a while and we're doing the same thing, but I'm still feeling the groove. But I wasn't getting the energy, the charge that I needed. I wasn't getting that feeling deep down inside that I needed. So I'm like, damn, damn. So then when she took off afterwards, because she was didn't speak a word. And we did this for like two, three months, people. Two, three months. Didn't speak a word. So then when she walked off, I, I thought I was just going to be paralyzed for a lot. But I was able to move and stuff. So I said, okay. So I backed up and went back on the track and started walking around and things. And then she just walked in the back of the house. So I got curious. I said, let me see where this woman going. So... One more day, it came down. She was out there. And again, I put on the shades because I knew I wasn't going to stay in my full cognitive mode. And we did the thing, and she was just helping me. Energy energy still up. The, the, it, it was just feeling good, damn good. So I walked my ass. And so she walks off. I let her get about, you know, a football length field in front of me. Then I walked behind her. So she walks in the houses behind Rose Park. And when she walked in the house, she'd make a turn on the first street. So, you know, I hustle up there, go to turn on the first street. Then she go down because she never looked back. She was like an autonomous robot. So I see her going to one, two, three, about the fourth house down. Now, going into the fourth house down, let me tell you, this house was run down, abandoned, fucked up, raggedy, whatever you want to call it. In such a beautiful community, this house was shit. Even the backyard was shit. So I said, God damn, she living now? You know, so I, you know, I just like from a distance watching. So then late on that night, I got in my, in my car and I drove past, you know, to see there was no lights on in the house. There was only one light on in the bedroom, like in the bedroom, but you could tell it was a dim light. Like she had a lamp. It wasn't the light from the ceiling. It was a lamp and it, it the house looked as shitty, man. So I say, okay. Yeah, so, you know, I say, well, she helping me with something. Keep in mind, I have forgot about the whole eye thing and how to, because, you know, maybe I thought she was like the blind samurai or Kichi and shit. You know, when people go blind, they don't have no pupils in their eyes. So I think she just was like that. So I say, let me bring her some. So the next day I came out there with about 100 to $200 in my pocket. And I was going, I was, hey, ma'am, how you doing? Thank you for helping me get through this. Keep in mind, we didn't speak a word. This is going to be the first time I spoke to this lady, or well, the second time after asking her what she doing. So I came out there, and, you know, I'm talking to her, and she's still not talking back to me. So I went in my pocket, and I pull out the money, and this is the only time she broke her stride. Because when I pulled out the money out of my pocket, she pressed my hand down so quick, like, put that money back up, like, in in. She keep my, She never spoke. This is all mental, cognitive people. Pushed my hand down and put it back in my pocket. And she just went to doing that right there. So I'm like, the fuck? She ain't got no eyes. She can't see how she know what I was doing. So we still reaching for the thing. We still reaching for the, the sky. Turn the left, reach for the sky. We're doing it. So I say, 
I don't like the feeling because it's like the energy me and her had changed. So I took the glasses off. And when I took the glasses off, I went into an instant trance again. And when I went into the instant trance, I could see her smiling at me. We were having a whole mental conversation. We was talking about life. We were talking about marriage. She was counseling me people. She was talking about the, the universe, stars, and it's like she was counseling me. So I had got stronger. And so times passed because we did, man, this lady did this for six, seven months. We didn't conversate. So I got divorced, you know, doing everything over again, starting over. So now I ain't got no need to go to the park. So I'm doing well, got my own shit. I'm living in my car for two months and thing. So I said, let me go in and check on old girl. You know, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm struggle point, but you know, I'm getting back on my feet. So I go over there and I pass by and I see her still out there doing the same old thing. You know, she ain't moving. Now this time she wearing sunglasses. She never wore sunglasses. Now she wearing sunglasses. So when I walk up to her, she stopped. Only time she stopped the procession, she stops and she walks up to me and she gives me a hug. And when she gives me a hug, she takes her sunglasses off and she put them on my face. And I'm like, what are you doing? And she gave me a hug and she grabbed me by my left hand. She walks me to the corner, like basically psych psychically telling me, you know, walk me home. That's OK, cool. So, you know, lady blind, you know, I, I got you, mama. I got you. You good people. So she walked me to the corner. And she, like, let my hand go, and she turned around, and she kissed me on the cheek. Kissed me on the cheek. I ain't had no beard, had nothing on my face. So, yes, ma'am, you know, yes, ma'am, cool. You know, so I'm I'm getting it psychotic, subconsciously, and, you know, psychically, it's like, okay, appreciation. She helped me, She and she saw the gesture I made, and she just needed the company. I'm coming up with everything. So I went away, so now I say, you know, I'm doing good. I got some money in my pocket. Let me go to this house and see if she need groceries or something. I'm just being, because the whole time, I don't think she had family. I just think it was just her. So I go to the house, and the house is raggedy fucked up. So I knock on the door. Nobody come to the door. Oh, damn, I just heard a knock. <laughs> so this shit, that's, that's my son. No, don't mind me. <sighs> So I knock on the door and nobody comes to the door. So I say, well, the house look abandoned. Let me, you know, go around a bit. So, you know, I moved the little raggedy fence and I go in the back. And again, the, 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 uh, the, not the carport. I forget what they call it, but the part where you sit up the, uh, the under porch, the porch with the covering on it. It's all raggedy, the furniture all old, like it ain't been used in years. Like it ain't been used in years, man. So I say, damn, I know she got to be here. It's like seven o'clock at night. So I, I say, let me go and go over here to the to the corner of the house, to the bedroom, and just give a little quick tap on the window and then, you know, step back far enough so if they open the window, you know, they can see me or hear me. And I say, Hello, ma'am, ma'am, I'm yelling, hello, ma'am, ma'am. So they were like, what the hell you doing, boy? The neighbor's like, what you doing? Ain't nobody in the house. Get your ass from over here. And I'm like, huh? They're like, get your ass from over here. I'm like, what the fuck you mean get from over here? You know, so now I'm like, I see this lady here, the Asian woman. And everybody just stopped. Now, this is a whole community, people. The Asian. I say, the Asian woman, man. She go to the park and she exercise, do yoga and, 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 and tai chi and shit and all that stuff, man. She right here. I say I walked home the other day to the corner right there. When I said that, the neighbor with a blue truck, I think he still lit up because everybody owned their property. So he came down. He said, Pam, Pam. He called Pam. His wife come running. What's going on? What's going on? This nigga say he seen the Asian woman. I say, okay. And they start laughing. He's like, when? Like, when did he see her? How long ago? And all of them smiling at each other like, bitch, we, you know something we don't know. So then he calls across the dude, Gary, across the street. Everybody's sitting up there. What's the commotion? What's going on? They like, he said he seen the Asian woman. He walked the Asian woman home the other day. Everybody in this community laughing like a motherfucker. <laughs> this nigga must be on something. 
So I'm like, so now I'm like, I'm not asking y'all jokes, right? So now, bitch, y'all, y'all really pissing me off because I ain't crazy. I six months I've been going through hell, thinking about suicide, thinking about leaving the state, thinking about starting over. So, bitch, don't you sit up and tell me that I'm a fool and and y'all making fun of me after this nice old lady that helped me through my problem. So, dude said, man, let me talk to you. He said, you thirsty? I said, y'all want shit, man. I said, what's going on? And he's like, you know that lady died, man. I say, when? Last night? I say, three days ago? He's like, no. That lady lived in that house by herself. Her whole family abandoned her. I said, what you mean? He said, she was found dead at that park. And he said, get this now. He say, what pavilion you saw her in? I say, the one right by the road, the only, the closest pavilion by the road, right there. He say, when you went there and saw her at that pavilion, he say, did you just feel the need to come over there and talk to her, hang out with her, and she didn't speak to you? I say, she ain't say not one word. So now everybody laughing, they slapping each other. They like, boy, that woman died. I say, that woman died like 15 years prior to you coming your ass here. I say, 15 years? He say, that's her house. Say her son still come over here and clean up the room and like keep her room okay, but they own that house and nobody lives in that house. But the son will come over there and make sure the room is well maintained, tidied up and shit. I say, so I see a light on at night. He say that be the sun. I say, come on, man, this power still to this bitch. He say just in that one room. Say everything else, so the house don't burn down. Say you'll see that light on. The sun will come in. That's not that woman. That woman been dead. So now nah, people, I'm fucked up, right? I'm real fucked up. I'm like, man, y'all with the bullshit. Y'all old niggas, y'all fucking with me. I'm saying all kind of shit. So I say, okay, I'm going to see y'all again. So now I'm going to the park. Because I worked for myself at the time. So I'm going to the park and I'm just waiting to see them. I don't see them no more. I'm going to the park. I'm waiting to see them. I don't see them no more. So I stopped going to the park. So about two, four, five years passed. And I'm driving past the park coming from uh, Dr. Phillips' area. I forget what I was doing out there. And I, you know, happen you glance at the park, boom, I'm glancing over there. So I see him. I instantly U turn, bust a U. So the whole time I'm busting a U, I see him. She doing the little movement. So I'm, I want to see, bitch, are you dead or not? You know, I'm finna ask questions. I'm finna ask. I'm finna try to touch her. She gonna think I assaulted her. I don't care. Because I ain't crazy. This is too flesh and blood for me. Turn around, U-turn, boom. As I U-turn and I park and I get out my car and I'm running over there to the pavilion, she already done started walking back to her house. So I say, okay, let me run to her. So I beeline, I spin, I beeline and I'm running to her. But for some reason, people, I just could not get the speed. My lungs won't let me do it. My feet won't let me do it. It was like something was pushing me from connecting with her because I was going to question her. So I see her get to the corner. She turned left, boom. So I say, okay, okay, I'm going to get there. So I'm fighting through the shit. People tell me why it was like three hours past and I was like stuck in motion like a statue watching that lady go. I couldn't move. So when I first, so when I snapped back to reality, I wasn't nowhere near that lady. I was sitting down on the park bench by myself looking at the road. And I looked at my phone. It was three hours. So I say, what the hell going on? So I get in the car and I drive there and now I pull in the parking lot, the parking way, the uh, parkway. So I'm looking and I go walking around the house. I say, this lady can't be dead. So these people come out there again. They like, man, what the fuck you doing, bro? I say, I just seen her again. She just went in. They say, didn't I tell you that's a fucking ghost? I say, we all see that damn lady walk to that park. We all see the ghost. I say, what? They say everybody in this community know that lady is dead as fuck. And we see her walk to the... I say, come on, man. The lady flesh and blood. I held her hand. I touched her. Say she made you walk her to the corner, right? And this is what he said. He say she ain't got no eyeballs. I say she got eyeballs. I say they just not like eyes, man. They like yellow. He say, boy, that's the sun goddess. Sun golden or some shit like that. He say, just don't stay in her eyes too long. I say, why? He said, because the myth around here, you stay in her eyes too long, she'll start bringing you into her world. And you'll be able to see all these dead people. You'll be able to see shit and you'll be able to experience her life. 
and we yelling at each other. I say, man, this is crazy. So now I'm going over there. Now keep in mind, grandma done passed. Grandma done, no, mama, mama yeah, grandma, grandma had passed. Yeah, grandma passed, mama had passed. My mama had passed, grandma passed a year later. So I ain't got nobody to talk to. So I'm sitting up there stressing like, the fuck, man, how we gonna do this? I say, what this? So I say, okay, let me let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. So I went to the one of the old dudes. He had just had a nose job done, like an instant in his nose and shit, something like that. So I used to see him out there. He drive a blue truck and he was like next door. So I say, let me walk with him because he was out there walking around. Now people, when I'm telling you, I'm telling you some real serious shit here. Yeah. So pay attention. So I get to walking, and I get to talking. I say, man, so you say the old lady living next to you, the Chinese woman, she done passed away. She been dead over 15 years. The light I seen on in the house is her son. I'm getting all the, he's like, yeah, the son come over there and take care of the house, but that lady did. And everybody knows she roamed the community. Say, sometimes she'll wait at the bus stop with the kids. And the bus driver done seen her who pick up the kids. They say, everybody see this one, this ghost lady standing there at that, like at the entrance of this park. Or they'll see her under the pavilion sitting down or, or doing yoga, Tai Chi type exercising. I said, and ain't nobody called Ghost Hunter, Ghost Busters, none of that shit. I'm like, no, man. Say, that's that woman ghost. Don't fuck with her ghost. And he was saying this so nonchalant and casually. So I said, okay. So now his wife come up there. Because I say, man, I'll meet you here the next day. I'm trying to walk with anybody in that community to find out what's going on. So his wife come up there. And listen, people. If you ever heard a bitch say, don't speak ill of the dead, this story should tell you why you shouldn't. When, damn, my board just turned red. It's like a portal just opened up on my chalkboard. I, I, I can't look at it. It's like a red stripes portal shit. I mean, all right. So, so the wife was out there and he, the wife was being disrespectful to him to the husband and he had just had kind of nose cancer surgery, put some stents in his nose. And she sent up there saying all kind of dumb shit to him. So now she done jumped in our conversation about, you know, the lady. Man, for uh, 40 minutes as me and this man walked around this this park, she was talking so much shit about the Asian people. She was talking so much shit about the Asian woman. She was talking about her son and how her son that was shit when they were growing up. Used to steal their oranges out their backyard. How they just, the house always smelled like heavy curry and shit. She was just talking so bad. Now, when she got around, like the second time, because it's 40 minutes, it take about 23 minutes to make a complete circle if you're just doing a nice drive. So we passed the first pavilion. I meant the pavilion where the lady was, and we looking and we like, she over there now, they making jokes and shit. So why, 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 why? So we making jokes. So the, the wife, his wife is just going on and on and on. And the man was like, she was a nice woman. She was a nice woman. And the husband said, be careful now. What if that ghost bitch come and kill you? They're making jokes. Man. We did the rotation and she was just in her nasty ass feeling. When she got around to the other thing, that lady just stopped. She's like, I'm so tired, I gotta sit down. That man wife went and sat down under the same pavilion that old woman used to hang out at that I met her at, that everybody says she go and do her yoga shit at. Tell me why his wife laid up there and suffered a stroke on the spot, laid down, lip hanging, arm flat, numb, bum, bum. And I said, man, I don't think your wife doing too good. And he was like, oh, shit, oh, baby, baby. He ran over there to her. So we called an ambulance and shit. So I'm sitting there. You know, I said, let me stay here in case they say he hit or knocked out some shit. Man, that lady went to the hospital. That lady died like 14 days later. So I seen him out there. He walking. You know, and he was slow walking this time. Slow. So, man, what's going on? You know, I'm finna try to... You know, ask about the wife, cheer him up. You know, because I really want to know more about this Asian woman because I'm trying to look her ass up. He's like, man, you know my wife died. I say, what? He said, yeah, man, my, my wife died. I had to go, you know, cover up, you know. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, my man. He like, she died of a stroke, you know, brain aneurysm type shit. I said, oh, shit, I'm sorry. And he say, you know, that's, that's, how, that's how the old lady died. I say, huh? 
He said, yeah, our next door neighbor, the one she was talking bad about, she never liked that woman or a kid. She even hated, hated living next to the Asian people. But both, but they had their house before we got our house, you know. But, you know, I said, oh, I'm so sorry. And you know what that man said? I'm not sorry to hear it. He said, and he started talking ill of his wife. He was like, because that bitch gave me hell. That bitch drove me crazy. I couldn't be friends with the people. I couldn't be friends with half of the people on the community. He was just saying how the lady stifled him and shit, how his wife stifled him and how nasty she was. And then I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear. So now all the little dirt coming out. So me and him going to walk, he was like, I wanted to get a divorce with her, but I just had to stay with her because of family, kids, yada, yada. So as we walking around the thing, he goes and sits on the pavilion. So when I go and sit on the division and I go, I mean, under pavilion, and he sits on the pavilion, we kind of sit like across from each other. And I'm like, brother, it's all right. I say, listen, man, I done been there, done that. So now we both going through the fact of losing someone, you know, I was losing my ex-wife through a divorce. He, will, he lost his ex-wife through death. So as we sitting up there, you know, pity party and talking, chilling, all that shit, tell me why the old lady appeared in front of both of us. She appeared in front of both of us. And know what she did? She started doing the whole energy grab dance again. So now me and him both got up and we start doing the energy grab dance. So I'm looking at him, he looking at me, we looking at her, we just like, he like, she finally appeared and it was like an honor for her to appear to him. So we doing the energy grab dance and as we doing the energy grab dance, I'm feeling better, he feeling better, she doing her thing and people, this is the most crazy thing that I may ever tell you that I experienced because somebody else was very much next to me experiencing this shit. So this ain't just my story. After she did the whole grab out dance dance, she started walking home. Now this time me and him can move. So we followed him because he lived that way. He left his truck parked at the park. So we left. We, so I followed him. So he follows, so I'm walking behind her. Now we walking behind her real slow. And as we walking behind her real slow, she walks to this abandoned house. She turns up in the yard of the abandoned house. We don't pass her. We let her get to the abandoned house. She fades through the motherfucking door of the abandoned house. And she don't come out no more. Now we thinking it's just me and him now. We look behind us. Everybody at the park that day, over 15 people, even the people that were doing exercises, y'all, they all was hooked up in a trance and we all followed this woman to the corner of her house while she went in. And when we came back to our senses in our mind, only thing we could talk about was that woman and how she had helped them and the reason why everybody was at that park exercising, getting in shape, feeling good about himself because her energy was taking care of all the energies at that part. And if you speak ill of that woman, your ass would die. Let that sink in your ass. Blew my mind. You know, I haven't been to that park in... I haven't been to that park in... since... 2019 people I refuse to go to that park I don't even want to see the woman this is Rose Park off of Old Winnegar Road and I want to say a Pop Cavalli or Dr. Uh, uh, yeah a Pop Cavalli and Old Winnegar Road right there the pavilion closest to the road you're going to see her you may see her I don't know but everybody that used to go to that park during that time who had a problem she would talk to them and everybody had seen this woman in this community. She was an Asian woman that used to, her soul was helping everybody out of their problems. I don't know why. Her soul just was helping people and she never said verbal word to us. She just had us dancing and moving funny and, and doing shit. And I can appreciate that, that woman. I can appreciate her energy. And her son used her house as a shrine to this day. And you'll walk past there. And now people are fixing the house up. I don't know if a family lived in there. I may just drive past there. I don't know if a family lived in there yet. But I could tell you that house stayed abandoned and empty for a long time. And 
I wish I could have grandma come in and say today, but it wasn't nothing like that. That older woman came and saved me at a time I was going through a very depressive moment with my second wife. And then she saved this man, you know, from a very mean, bitter woman. And everybody in the park that was there, that was exercising, utilizing the energy of that park, that woman had touched their life. That ghost woman had touched their life in some form or fashion. Because keep in mind, she was dead 15 years. The people that was there, they was in their 30s. They was in, some of them in their 40s and 50s. But these people, you could tell they wasn't living in that neighborhood, going to that park every day. So everybody had experienced this ghost at one point or another. And I'm going to leave it right there. I hope this story made sense to you. This is just one chapter of, of Tyke's old life. And, and I, again, I'm going to say never speak ill of the dead. Too bad if the dead is trying to help the living. I'm just going to be honest with you because they don't like that. That's their retribution and redemption. <sighs> I'm going to get off this piece. All right, everybody. I'm Tyke telling you guys sometime the truth is stranger than fiction, but it's the truth. No doubt. Y'all take care and be safe. Have a good one.